We got an interesting perspective tonight from somebody who writes about education in Rhode Island. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. Erica Sanzi is a former school committee member in Cumberland, an education blogger, advocate, and uh, interesting voice, and somebody that I've been uh, looking forward to having on this program. She and I got into a conversation uh, on the radio earlier this week off the, the conversation about the presidential election in France and the age difference between the presidential, presidential candidate there and the winner and his wife. And, uh, it got into the law in Rhode Island regarding teachers and students, and I was kind of shocked and horrified over what I heard. And, and so uh, I think you'll enjoy this conversation, and we'll touch base on a whole bunch of education issues. It's great to have you aboard on, what is today? It is Wednesday, and it feels like summer. And if I start sweating, it's because I had a late workout. That's another story altogether. Let's go to the rundown and see what's going on. Deepening concerns. Yeah, the impeachment word is floating around now, and I think in some ways it's titillating for a lot of people. Headlines like this, Congress shows growing concern over Trump controversies. That's probably an understatement. And then, you know, friends like this, who needs enemies? Oh, Putin is going to, you know, back him up. Uh, Vladimir, you're the last guy that Donald Trump wants to have backing him up right now. Here's the latest. Republican leaders say they support I didn't see that a one. vigorous investigation of possible Trump campaign ties with Russia. We need the facts. It is obvious there, there are some people out there who want to harm the president, but we have an obligation to carry out our oversight regardless of which party is in the White House. House Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz has requested to see a newly revealed memo former FBI Director James Comey wrote in February claiming the president asked him to drop the investigation into fired National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. In that memo, Comey quoted the president, I hope you can see your way clear to letting this go, to letting Flynn go. He's a good guy. The White House responded, saying the president has never asked Mr. Comey or anyone else to end any investigation. Whether it breaks the law or not is not the point here. The point is he was trying to interfere with an investigation. Well, so far, a majority of Republican lawmakers do not agree with their Democratic colleagues that there needs to be a special prosecutor to pick up this investigation. But with every new revelation, more of them are beginning to change their minds. Increasingly, Republicans believe that we have to do something different than what we're doing today. Members of both parties have called for Comey to come back to Capitol Hill to testify. Now listen, and after that happens, it's going to be like this. You know how the pendulum doesn't swing and then it just goes boom, like, sorry. Uh, it, do, it, it feels that way anyway. Uh, we're 117 days into this presidency. Not 1117, but 117. Who knew? Mm, some of us thought we did. Uh, is it over? Yogi Berra said it ain't over till it's over. So Donald Trump has time, I think, to create a story. Then again, who's going to help him with that? Because my thinking is what's going to happen is that folks inside who are just tired of covering and fabricating and being, you know, kind of thrown under the bus, da 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 da, are finally going to say, you know what, love of country, I got to get out. And once those people start to peel away, he's going to be left where he likes to be, all alone. Uh, to say stay tuned is an understatement. In fact, a guy says to me today, he said, hey, Dan, your show at night doesn't catch up to everything that Donald Trump is doing during the day. I said, I know, because we tape early in the afternoon. It's like you can't keep up with this guy for the wrong reasons. All right, let's go to Rhode Island and talk about the Paw Sox here for a second. You know, the finance project, as the headline indicates, is a pretty profound one. The Paw Sox, over 30 years, put $45 million into their new park, $12 million down and a million a year over 30 years to cover one part of a lease and $500,000 a year in naming rights. Who pays a half a million dollars to name a local stadium? I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. Uh, all that dedicated revenue seemingly, at least at first glance, will help to cover the financing that the city of Pawtucket and the state are being asked to kick in here, some $38 million together. This is one of the more profound investments for a AAA franchise in America today. And if we didn't have 38 studios, and if we didn't have the ridiculous effort they made last year in Providence, this thing would fly through. But right now, politicians, the governor, the speaker, the Senate president even, are just kind of hiding under the desk trying to figure out what to do with this new proposal. Here's the latest from yesterday. 
The proposed ballpark would be in downtown Pawtucket on the site of the Apex building. Please let us make a long-term commitment. The Pawsocks announcing the plans to much fanfare, but it has quite the hurdle to jump. The Pawsocks plan to pay for $45 million of the publicly owned stadium, asking the state to kick in $23 million. The city will pay $15 million. Insofar as this is a proposal that keeps the team in Pawtucket, uh, I'm very pleased with that. Governor Gina Raimondo previously declined a request for much more money for a downtown Providence stadium. She says this request is much better. This proposal um, appears to me um, to be that the ballpark would pay for itself. Uh, and would be self-supporting. The Pawsocks have pledged to pay for any cost overruns and to pay the state back with revenues over 30 years. We've heard everybody loud and clear that they would be protected. Mayor Donald Grebe informed this plan with the club owners. He says there's no plan B if the General Assembly won't expend the money. A backup plan, we haven't got to that point yet because we really don't feel, we feel this proposal is so strong and the merits of it speak for itself that we're not going to get there. I got to tell you, you got to give this guy credit. He hung on to this deal when it was a one out of ten chance to do so. He has driven this deal and he has showed exceptional leadership and commitment to his own city and to a project that I still think is absolutely, if it's financeable, worthwhile for the state of Rhode Island. The speaker is saying, hey, I want to see what the governor wants to do. The governor is saying, eh, I have to like, look at it. The Senate president is somewhat bullish on it because he's labor, but he's not putting his front foot forward on this. Um, this General Assembly session is going to be important. Hearings will take place. You should pay attention, and you should, if you think this is a bad deal, hold your breath and take a good long look at really what the numbers are and how it compares to other deals across the country. And then try to do this for yourself. Try to think, if 38 hadn't happened and you weren't so poisoned, and if the Providence thing hadn't been tried, would you look at this thing with the idea that it makes sense? And by the way, $68 million to renovate McCoy, and if you don't renovate McCoy, you got to do something with it, which costs tens of millions of dollars anyway. So, we're kind of locked in to this project in some ways. Uh, Friday, with the, uh, the management of the Paw Sox here, and maybe the mayor too, we'll, uh, we'll check on that. All right, coming back home, because the budget numbers aren't that good, the governor is starting to hedge on her tuition reform. This headline... Uh, is something that uh, draws attention to that and you should read. While she doesn't offer an alternative plan at this point, she is not so confident about her two-year free college tuition plan being financeable, which means I think she may just come right back to where I have been talking about, maybe a tuition freeze or lessening of tuition or something across the board. Eric is not here for that necessarily, but you have things to say about all things education. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. Local gal, Cumberlander. Uh, we see each other from time to time on the local circuit. Um, excellent school committee member in her day, 2010 to, th what is it, one term? One term, oh, 2010. That's all you can take? Two well, my kids were really small then, and, oh, okay. and it's a lot. It's an all consuming, when you do it right, it's an all consuming gig. Hmm. So now you write. A lot, yeah, I write. Yeah. All right, so you're a blaga. Before we get into the, uh, I think, pretty compelling conversation that you and I had on the radio the other day, tell me what you think about the governor's tuition plan. So I lean towards supporting it, for sure. All right, get out. I've heard your arguments, and I, and I don't think that they're wrong. The means testing conversation certainly, I think, fair to have. Mm. But we need a better educated state. And we need that to happen K-12, and we need it to happen at the college level. We just don't have enough people that are skilled enough to be sustaining our economy. So her number, I believe her numbers, which are that you need 70% are going to need some sort of post-secondary ed. Only 40% have that. It's just not sustainable. So we need to get more kids in school after high school, and we need to do a better job making sure they're ready when they get there. Mm. But the two-year free college education plan specifically, listen, I'm bullish on the local institutions, and I'm all about you know more kids uh, getting an opportunity. And I'm even, I don't know, maybe I'm just growing liberal in my, in my day, I'm, I, I, in my old age. I, I, I want to see more kids have an affordable shot at it, mm -hmm. but I think this has been a gimmick from the get-go, and it may not hold up at $30 million a year when it flushes out. And I think that's an underestimation, not an overestimation. Um, it wouldn't be such a bad thing if she's got shorter dough to suppress tuition expenses and maybe to provide more opportunities for low-income kids and all that kind of thing, seems to me. But right now, Rick and you are have terrific returns on investment, yeah. where they are, aren't they? I mean, I haven't put a kid through either of them, so I can't say for sure, but I think that they are excellent institutions that also can get better. And I think that 
we just need more kids going to school. I think that if you saw some of the numbers when I was looking back when I was on school committee, I mean, we only had half of our kids even taking SATs. Hmm. They couldn't even apply to four-year colleges without doing that. So I just think... Half the kids. Yeah. Hmm. It's, um, the numbers are just startling, I think, to, to some of us who sort of, like I grew up around, everybody took the SAT. So you really need to dig in and see what's really happening. And for me, if, if her proposal meant that we'd get more kids going, um, I would be leaning towards supporting it. That being said, there's no reason that, you know, your family and my family need free tuition. I agree with that. Mm, okay. Well, that's not necessarily the purpose for the conversation today. When we come back, uh, you might be surprised about what the state law actually allows for in Rhode Island. Fasten your seatbelts. So the other day we were talking about uh, the new president Macron and his wife Bridget who's some almost 25 years older than he is. And I was talking about this on the radio weekdays 3 to 6 on WPRO where I was lamenting how politically acceptable it would be in America for a candidate of significance to be set up this way. Whether, uh, you know, the 25 year age difference, man being younger, would fly. Even in France where they're a little looser on these kinds of things. It was something that they had to really tackle. So Erica, who uh, was listening to the radio program, dialed in and, and talked about this story, not necessarily from the political point of view, but from the educational point of view. She was his teacher. Correct. And he kind of fell for her when he was, what, 14, 15 years of age. The relationship seems to have become inappropriate around 15. Mm. For him, and she was 24 years older, so she was 39. Inappropriate, meaning I don't know. It became physical with them. Um, there's the reporting is different about that. I mean, there was definitely a relationship going on, lots of talking, you know, kind of daily talking. His parents needing to request, actually, sort of beg her to stay away from him until he reached adulthood. Mm -hmm. That's a quote. They sent him away to school in another city in the hope that they could separate them. It didn't work. And so she, um, when he turned 18, she had divorced her husband and left behind. I, I don't know the situation with her kids. She had three daughters, but she left her family behind and went and joined him, and they got married, and yeah. they've been married for a long time now. Okay. So I'm not going to make any quips about this because it will be received as you know, double standardish, and, and it's absolutely true that a 25-year age difference exists in the, in the White House as we speak, Donald Trump and Melania, and I've never mentioned that as a problem or even a reflection, perhaps because, you know, I've got enough to say about Donald Trump anyway. <laughs> you don't need uh, that. Yeah, but, I mean, it, but it seems like um, that kind of rolls off our consciousness. We can talk about that aspect of it, but here's the horrifying part. You ready for the horrifying part? Tell us the horrifying part. The horrifying part is that in the state of Rhode Island and also in the state of Massachusetts, it is not against the law for a teacher to have sexual relationship with their student as long as the student is 16 or older. Every other New England state, get that? <laughs> every other New England state prohibits that. Um, so even though their their legal age of consent is 16, they have a special clause in there that talks about teachers and students, people in positions of authority. But in Rhode Island, it is perfectly legal for a teacher to have a sexual romantic relationship with a student if the student is at least 16. You don't even have to say she looked 21. Nope. What up with that? Now, a district, and what we see, you know, sort of nationwide on this stuff, the district can fire and terminate, and, and frequently then that teacher will just jump to a different district, different state, and similar things will happen. But there's no legal recourse. They didn't break the law. So when parents go to the police looking for help and support, they're told there's nothing we can do. All right, well, the age of consent is 16. Correct. All right, so is there a practical distinction? And are we getting our uh, panties in a bundle here for no reason? Uh, is there protocol and precedent for termination, firing, all that kind of thing uh, with a relationship? Of, of student and teacher of the kind we're talking about? I mean, there's certainly precedent in firing. I mean, we see the statistics tell us that this is happening a lot. 
with with students who are older where there's relationships happening and then we've got the younger kids where it's kind of a different situation um, but for me it is never okay because there is an imbalance in the power within that relationship you have an authority figure with somebody in this case a student so you've got the power dynamic is off yeah without doubt I mean it, so yeah so like for you know so while people want to debate this a little bit because they don't think well 16 you know 18 you know what's the difference to me it's much more about well, there's a huge difference between 16 and 17 and 18 and there's also a huge difference between a graduate who's now you know out and then where there is no more that dynamic versus teacher and student all right let's see if I'm being clear here obviously the age of consent is is applicable and there's no legal ramification but is it is it actionable suspension terminatable yes. it is it is all right so maybe we shouldn't be so concerned about it i mean it, it, um well I don't because know. because the age of consent is 16 and because there's no legal problem with that outside the employment has this ever been tested by uh, you know an educator a teacher who had a relationship with a teenage person under their teaching custody has what been tested in other words hey listen it's legal for me to date this boy or this girl you can't pop me for it well there's so there's a case in Massachusetts that was recent where um, parents just the parents discovered an inappropriate relationship going on with a high school Spanish teacher Cardinal Spellman and the teacher and the kid the daughter took off and they're still gone and the parents there's nothing they can do because when they went to the police to say my daughter has now left with this teacher and they're gone yeah. the police said it kills us to say this but we can't help you there's nothing we can do so there is no law in Rhode Island or Massachusetts that prohibits teachers from having relationships with 16 years old there's no law no law the, but there's no is there a sub educational statute not that, that I'm, not that I'm aware of. So, so well, I mean, only in the sense that the school can take action, right? So they can suspend and they can terminate. Now, the different conversation is that what often happens is like, so you terminate here and they go to a different district. We saw this with all the boarding schools too, right? Something kind of happened here, they move on to another school. So the predatory because, behavior because, doesn't change. Because it's a personnel matter, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily travel. It's a personnel matter that USA Today did a year-long investigation that we as a country don't track well. Um, some states do a better job, but you know, Rhode Island had a D and math had an F for their tracking of this kind of data. So, but I think it's important to say too, right, because these are the kind of stories that can make people hysterical and make parents scared. We're talking about a tiny fraction of school personnel, probably about 1%. Teachers, bus drivers, coaches, custodians. So the, the, the percentage of school personnel that, that are doing this is tiny. Mm. So hysteria is not what we need. But on the other hand, it's something that I think we need to be willing to talk about, which is number one, which nobody really wants to do. Difficult conversation, uncomfortable, very much like the Catholic Church scandal, in my opinion, but much larger because it's impacting far more kids. Hmm. All right, when we come back, what, what is the conversation to have? It seems to me that it's kind of a rock and a hard place for all of us. Stay with us. Okay, so if a teacher and a student are having a relationship of romantic nature or physicality uh, and he or she is 16 and uh, whatever, there's no state law in Rhode Island or Mass that prohibits that. There may be contractual Correct. language that allows for suspension and or termination. Correct. However, so you, you want to have this conversation here and you want to do what? You want to change state statutes? Yes. To do what? So I want our state law to look like Connecticut's where it doesn't, where the, the legal age of consent can stay 16, but add a clause that, that prohibits, makes it illegal for teachers and students to engage in that kind of relationship. I basically want to take what Connecticut's law says and have it here. And what does Connecticut's law say exactly? I'd have to read it, because um, I don't, but it essentially says the legal age of consent is 16, however, it prohibits any sexual relationship between teacher and student. Some states say authority figure, others actually spell out teacher and student. You think there'd be pushback? I would, I don't think so. Who's gonna, I mean, I who's don't gonna think go so. Who's gonna go to a hearing 
and stand up, give their name and address, <laughs> and, and, and stand up and say, well, listen, I think, uh, you know, the rights of a teacher and the rights of a student to have a physical relationship, and no, who's going to be on the record to stand up for that? I would so imagine. So why hasn't we, so why, why haven't we matched that I don't think legislation? That, I don't think people know. I, I don't, I mean, do you think if we pull the General Assembly, they know this? I, I bet if you asked them, they, this would surprise a lot of them. Um, so they probably don't know. Well, it surprised me. So, you know, yeah. you don't, you know, maybe I'm the first person to sort of bring it up and talk about it. I mean, this has become an issue that I started writing about with some regularity after I saw the movie Spotlight. Mm. Um, and so it could just be that they need to learn about it like you are. But Spotlight was about the church. It was, but it got me thinking a lot about this because I had already been knee deep in this issue as it pertains to schools. So I, I saw a similar pattern. You've been knee deep in this issue, why? Because when you advocate, when you believe that children- Was there a specific story no. in, in the past that, that, that moved you to get involved in this conversation? No, it's more that when you believe in reforming education, to me, it's everything. So it's not only high expectations for all kids, excellent instructors, um, it's also ensuring that they get our best, that we take care of them and we're not giving them our best with the law as it's currently written, in my opinion. Well, I don't know how to argue that. I mean, how, how do you argue that? Is there no rep or senator that wants to put this in and say, hey, by the way, FYI, we need to correct this immediately. That seems to me to be, you put the bill in, you write it, you match what Connecticut's doing, you have a couple hearings, no one argues, you pass it, you're done. Let's hope. Who's going to step up? Who's going to step up and say, well, the, well, the teacher union's going to step up and say, this is a violation I of don't rights? So. I mean, I, I, again, nothing surprises me having been working in this world for a long time, but I would hope that they would not do that. Have you talked to legislators about this? No, not yet. Why? Uh, I guess it's something that I've... I've Why would you be, I mean... You, you know, I mean, do, okay, have I talked to them? Do I write about it? Yes. Do I send stuff? Yes. Do I tweet at people? Yes. Have I set up a meeting? No, not yet. And maybe it's time. I mean, that's a great question. I mean, one of the things is that... Oh, listen, if we've got 10 state reps or senators watching the show, and they all tell me they watch the show now, I right? certainly kind of watch the show all the time, you know, whatever. Uh, you think they'd all be competing tomorrow to get on the set and say, oh, by the way, I saw that Erica Sanzi, she couldn't be more correct, and I want to write that legislation. Hurry up. I, want, right? I, would, I would love that. I would love that because I actually was looking at this more nationally for a long time and then the Cranston story, that's what it was. It was the Cranston mm -hmm. story out of Cranston West that got me looking at our... There was a psychologist actually who kind of protected the teacher in that particular thing. So the teacher, Allegedly. yeah. Right, so. so the Cranston West science teacher, history of incidents, arrested on 12 counts, yeah, yeah. mandatory reporting law broken, right. boom. That's what got me looking at our state laws. All right. Well, it's fairly recent, uh, but... We're, we're out of time. Uh, anybody who wants to sponsor this legislation, uh, background is right here. I would love that. Thanks for bringing it up. Appreciate it. I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. Final word, and we can back. Stay with us. Right. Can you get a legislator to write that legislation? Illegality for, you know, students and teachers to be... Oh, come on. I, I just... It, it couldn't be easier. You want to be a hero? Heroin couldn't be easier. See you on the radio tomorrow at three. Tomorrow, uh, some financial advice for you and some cyberspace warnings for you as well. Have a great night.